Hey guys, Backyard Scientist here. Today we're going to be trying to turn this old oven into a kiln, or like a burnout furnace for doing wax investments for aluminum castings. Now, to my knowledge, this has never been done before, so I have nothing to go off of, so we're just going to have to wing it and hope something works. Uh, I guess the first thing to do is start taking this apart and see how it works. Let's get started. I started by removing the door and the central core of the oven. Yeah, that's probably asbestos. Then I removed the old fiberglass insulation and put in some fire bricks to see how they fit. Ten of them fit in there pretty conveniently, so I just slapped some mortar on there and chucked them in the oven. After that, I took some uh, ceramic fiber blanket and I cut it to size, put it in the oven. This stuff is super itchy, way itchier than I thought it would be. You should definitely wear long sleeve shirts when working with this stuff. I kind of glossed over the first part about how I got to this stage, but I don't feel like that's super important because your oven is likely to be different than mine, and I didn't want to go into too much detail about it because it's pretty self-explanatory. The most important thing is the materials that you choose to build this with rather than how you build it, or how I built it, if that makes sense. The materials I've used so far are insulating fire brick, a high temperature mortar, and a ceramic fiber blanket. I got the fire brick and the mortar from a company called HWI, Harborson Walker International. And if you're lucky enough to live near one of their distribution centers, you can get this stuff at a really good price. So these fire bricks were $35 for a pack of 12, so it's three bucks a brick. I also bought their brand of high temperature mortar, which is called Green Therm 421, I think. Or four, I'll put the link for everything down below. Uh, you can also buy this stuff on Amazon called like high temperature refractory cement, 2000 degrees. It's just as good. I've used that before also. I got this ceramic fiber blanket from Skyline Components Online, and it's a special kind because it's biosoluble. That means that if you breathe it in, if you get it on your skin, it's not gonna, you know, get in your lungs and sit in there like asbestos does and give you cancer. The thing you should do with all fiber blanket, and especially this biosoluble fiber blanket, is apply a sealant to it, which is usually something like just colloidal silica in water and you just kind of spray it on or maybe use a thin layer of mortar over it because especially with this stuff, extra moisture will eventually degrade it and make it fall apart. Now let's install this digital temperature controller. It's a kit that I got on eBay. It contains the controller unit, a relay, and a thermocouple. So I don't think we're gonna be needing this knob on the oven anymore for controlling the temperature. So that's where we'll put it. I just used a Dremel to uh, cut a hole into the oven, then gently forced the controller into there. Yeah, gently. Then I used a drill and I just drilled some holes through the fire bricks, through the oven, and I used the old heating elements from the oven and just stuck them right through with some extra wires attached. Then I just spray painted the oven for the rest of the night. After I finished painting the oven, I spent the rest of the night wiring up the heating elements. All right, we're almost ready to turn it on. One thing I didn't show you is that I put uh, I, I took out the old insulation from the oven door and I put in this Rockwell insulation. I don't know if it's any good. It's it's probably pretty good. Let's see how fast this heats up, how hot it can get. I've got my crucible here. We'll put in some scrap aluminum and chuck it in here. All right. All right, I set it to 700 degrees and it's rising pretty fast, but I think it's still gonna take a while to melt the aluminum and get at the temperature. So in the meantime, uh, remember that time where I said I'm gonna show you around my new place? I'll show you around in a little bit, but first I want to show you something and then I never did. How about while we're waiting for that to heat up, I actually show you around this time. This is what the garage looked like when I first moved in, but after a ton of work, I'm super happy with how it turned out. This is the welding table I made. It's a half inch thick steel. This thing is super sturdy. It's not going anywhere. These are some cool lights I made. The favorite part about these lights, they change color temperatures. So depending if I'm filming at nighttime or in the day, or I just want some mood lighting or something, I can change this. These are fluorescent lights, and I got fluorescent lights because they don't flicker on high-speed camera like some of the LED lights do, like those. This is my storage area. This is, I built these shelves. This is, uh, was a project of mine. It took longer than it should have, but we've got some pretty good storage in here now. Oh yeah, I also have a pool. A lot of you guys are asking about that. Yep, still have a pool. Now that it's my pool, I don't really feel like pouring molten aluminum in it though. This is what my backyard looks like right now, and that's probably why I'm not gonna be doing videos back here for a little bit because the ground, the entire ground is flammable. This is the front yard area right here, and I think this would actually be a perfect place to film. Maybe put up some like trees along the road there so my neighbors can't see what I'm blowing up. Okay, going back towards the garage area. I think the raccoon lives in there somewhere. Okay, let's see what the oven's on. All right, so we're at 700 degrees Celsius. The aluminum should be molten by now. Whoop, whoop, oh, that's hot. So it's been on for an hour and it seems like it's maxed out at about 786 degrees. Let's see if it's molten now. 
Whoa, that's hot. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'd say that works. That thing is super hot on the inside. Pretty much the reason I made this oven was to help me with aluminum casting. Now I can print stuff out on my 3D printer and put it into a box, encase it in plaster, put the plaster into the oven and melt the plastic out. That'll leave a hollow void so I can fill it up with aluminum. So that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. I have this uh, cardboard box, I lined it with fiberglass and that should help with the structural strength of the fiber of the plaster so it doesn't break apart in the oven. And then I made this, um, these are some 3D printed parts I printed out. Uh, yeah. 3D printed parts I printed out and I made, you know, I sprued them up like this and I'm going to put it in here and fill it up with plaster. Let the plaster dry for a day, then I put it in the oven for 6 hours at 200 C, 6 hours at 400 C, and finally 6 hours at 600 degrees Celsius. I kept the oven at 600 degrees while I was melting some aluminum in my foundry. Once it was done, I took it out of the oven and I reinforced the outside of it with sand. Then I used a leaf blower to blow out all the extra debris or anything else that might be left inside the mold. Then I poured some aluminum in, waited about 30 tense minutes, put out some slight fires, and then I came in there with a hammer and I chipped it all up. There was a little bit of aluminum that got out the side, but that's what the sand was for to stop it all from leaking out. Then I used my hose to blast off the hot plaster and I was left with some pretty nice aluminum castings. These things are pretty smooth and they really picked up the detail from that plaster mold. I'm super excited with how well this thing worked for the first attempt I ever had at doing a lost PLA casting like that. Um, that was a different plaster block than I showed you on video. This is a plaster block I made a couple days ago before I even filmed this, but the pieces came out really good. You could really tell that the plaster held on to the detail on that 3D printing. Um, Anyway, this is a really cool project. I hope I inspired some of you guys to make it. The cost was about $270. It would be a lot less if you used all fire bricks instead of the refractory blanket as well. And the oven was $40, and if you got that free, I think the cost would only be like $150 total. So before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to another YouTube user, Keystone Science. He makes really cool videos like Tesla coils, Slayer exciters, microwave guns really neat stuff guys and he's really consistent puts out great content like every week he's way more punctual than i am and his content's really good he deserves a shout out guys so so go check that stuff out but besides that that's the end of this video i'll see you guys soon bye